course you know about Mickey Fields, everybody knows about Mickey. Well, see, Mickey, <clears throat> Mickey was one of those people with talents that you can't explain. See, most of us grew up in a society where things that can be explained, oh, that's what it is. But there's so many things. The real things, actually, my belief, can't be explained. The superficial ones can. So in response to your question about Mickey, Mickey had the real stuff. I quote. <laughs> Fields was a world-class saxophonist, and he, re he really could have played anywhere in the world that he had, had decided to go to, but to Mickey instead chose to stay in Baltimore, that the road wasn't his bag, so he stayed around the city to charm jazz lovers here for four decades. On Monday, kidney disease took Mickey from us. Today was Mickey's funeral, and did they turn out? Mickey was just a wonderful person. He had an open heart. You just, he had time for everyone. Today is one the saddest day in my life. Losing one of the best friends and musician buddies I've ever had in life. Which is exactly the way everyone inside St. Anne's Church felt about Mickey Fields. The mayor of Baltimore, a former mayor. Hundreds of people who wanted to say goodbye. It's really cool. He was a, the best. And they all loved him. We made eye contact. And uh, I just thought he was very cute and very talented. I liked the way he played. And uh, I, I got the how I got the nerve up. I don't know. I found oh I know they had they had pay phones. It was a pay phone right in the club at the very front when you came in the door. It was one of the pay phones. And I got got the number off of it. And I thought I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him up one day. How are you doing? Do you know who this is? No. And I said, the girl that comes and sits at the bar all the time, and when you play the songs and you get up on the bar and you walk around, I'm the one that grabs your pants leg all the time and makes you stand. He said, I know who this is. Mom did not go in that club grabbing my father's alt leg. <laughs> I did. I said, Mom was a hoe. <laughs> no, I just was just to make him stand there and Sherry play. Sherry Showbar. He played in front of us. He, he, he played right in front of us. Major balls, didn't she? The, she knew what she wanted. She sure did. It was love at first sight. I, I told you that. that. I was, told you that. It was Mom love was at first crazy. sight. That's what Mom was. Call me what you would. You wouldn't be here. This is true. <laughs> there were no normal dates. Everything had to be sneaking at that time. No normal dates. I got cursed out once in front of Sherry's. It was a couple of guys standing on the outside of the club, and, and he called me an end lover. That's what he did. And uh, I just ignored him. And he come over, and he ran behind me, grabbed my arm, and swung me around. He said, who? He said, do you know what you're doing? And I said, I haven't done anything. Yes, you know. Yes, you do. I see the looks going between you and that guy in there. In the 50s, it was really, really bad. My cousin had married a Philippine man. And she, she told me, she said, you know, you cannot get married here in Baltimore. You're going to have to drive over to D.C. Because she said that's what her and Tony had to do. So he said, okay, then we'll go to D.C. So that's what we did. My cousin, the one I just finished telling you about, the, the married the Philippines, she was completely, once she married him, she was cut off completely. Shoot. I admit it. My it father had to drop us off in an alley. I remember that. Plain as day. Plain as day. 
He wasn't allowed in the house, in my grandmother's house in Canton. So he had to come through the back alley. We were allowed to be there, but he wasn't. So he would drop us off there. And I you mean your grandma's there. rules? Yeah, my grandmother. And she never said anything bad about him. Never badmouthed him, never said anything bad about him, but he just was not allowed there. And I, when I was little, I didn't get it, but as I got older, I, I was a little ticked about it. It was sad. I should have been the one that spoke up and said, I'm not going. I'm not going to come down. I'm not bringing the kids. But I was trying to please both. I was trying to please him. He never stopped me, though, and he never complained. He never said a word about it. He said, your mother has to live down there with those people. All the other kids, it, it was damaging. They called me names. They didn't want to play with me. I basically had to stay in the yard. And even when I went in the yard, one kid, their houses were leveled, and the one kid would be on the roof, and he would call me names, call me the N-word, and say I was dirty, and I was this, and I was that. And it was it was bad. But, you know, it, it when you're that child and you feel like you're different and you're you're not like all the other kids it's damaging i'm not gonna lie it is damaging but if you have strong parents like my mother and my father who taught me i'm not a freak um you know i'm me i'm so happy what i love what i am now i love it i get the best of both worlds that, when that gout got him so bad he was really having a hard time sleeping he was everything Sleeping the and and I guess when he drank a lot it numbed it and then when they told him he had to stop It was really bad. They would they would Burst and mom would have to put packing in it in his feet and he had to get special shoes and The the hands were just so Deformed deformed. It was really bad. He had to retrain himself to play the saxophone which he did I don't know how. No, a lot of musicians couldn't figure out how. That's it. It's kind of old. You walk around and you all swole it. You know, and it doesn't say a whole lot. And I um, picked up his horn and started playing. God damn. Like, who, who is this dude? I mean, it sounds deep. Standing at the door in the back of the club, and I'm listening to the sound come out of this horn. And this is a guy, old school. You know, the sound would fill the room, you know, with or without a microphone. This dude was marshaled. I still say it to this day, he's one of the best saxophone players I've ever seen.